Step 3. Scheduling. What we have to realize about purification is that perfect fidelity is impossible to reach. We say that F approaches unity only if their number of rounds goes to infinity. So we can reach unit fidelity only in the asymptotic limit, and this is only under ideal conditions. This is really not an issue, the fact that we don't reach perfect fidelity, because purification itself is not our goal. Our goal is the following. Starting with a given initial fidelity F base, we want to reach a particular final fidelity F final. The base fidelity is dictated by the hardware. The better our hardware is, the higher F base we start with. And the final fidelity F final is given by the application that we're trying to use. Every application has different fidelity demands, and these have to be met by the purification scheme. Furthermore, we want to produce high quality bell pairs efficiently. So the important question is, how many base bell pairs do we need in order to reach a particular final fidelity? This is what this step is about. Let's consider a, a purification scheme called the symmetric recurrent purification scheme. In here, we start with two uh, identical bell pairs and we purify them. Just like in this picture here. Over here, we start with four, four base bell pairs each with fidelity F base. We purify the first pair to get uh, a new uh, bell pair of fidelity F prime given by the expression on the right. We purify the second one to get the uh, bell pair of the same fidelity. And then we run our uh, purifi purification scheme again in the second round, R equals to two, to get a new, um, a new bell pair of fidelity F double prime. And this way we can keep increasing and boosting the fidelity, as we have seen in the previous section. The problem is that you can clearly see that the number of base uh, bell pairs needed scales exponentially. So the total number is given by 2 to the power of r, the number of rounds. But let's consider what happens to the infidelity of the state. The infidelity is pretty much straightforward. It's the probability that the state is wrong and is given as 1 minus the fidelity of the state. Over r rounds, the infidelity uh, scales as follows. It's 1 minus the base fidelity, the whole thing to the power of 2 times r. Meaning that the errors in our uh, noisy state that we are purif purifying, they get suppressed very fast, which is good. However, there are issues with recurrent purification scheduling. As we mentioned, the exponential resource scaling is one problem. This means that we require large amounts of quantum memory in order to store all those um, bell pairs. Furthermore, the purification, as we have seen, is probabilistic. It doesn't always succeed, meaning that if one of the base, uh, uh, one of the pairs is not purified, it fails the purification scheme, the other one has to wait for a new partner. So this increases the wait time. Furthermore, creating the base bell pairs is probabilistic in itself. Photons get lost, or they don't get detected, or they don't even get collected into the fibers. This introduces further waiting time. For example here. Again, we start with the same bell pairs of base fidelity. We purify the first one to get a new bell pair of fidelity F prime. But the purification on the bottom two fails. So this means that we again have to distribute two bell pairs of base fidelity, purify them in order to get a new bell pair with fidelity F prime, and then that one can get uh, purified with our uh, initial uh, F prime at the top to get uh, a new uh, bell pair of higher fidelity F double prime. So this covers the recurrent symmetric purification scheme. Now let's look at a slightly different scheme called entanglement pumping. In here, what you do is you keep one bell pair and purify it repeatedly with a base bell pair, as follows. You start with two bell pairs of base fidelity and you purify it in order to get F prime. Then you distribute another base bell pair and you use that and run the purification scheme with your uh, uh, bell pair of fidelity F prime to get F double prime. 
Again, you bring, an, bring in another uh, bell pair of base fidelity and you run the purification in order to boost the fidelity again. So there are a number of advantages. This scheme is quite light on resources. You don't need as much memory as you did in the previous scheme for the recurrent symmetric purification scheme. But there are some disadvantages as well. Unit fidelity cannot be reached even asymptotically. Even if you keep running this scheme more and more and more, you will never reach unit fidelity. Furthermore, the success probability drops as the difference between the fidelities of the two pairs increases. Remember, we are always keeping one um, bell pair of increasingly higher and higher fidelity, and we're running the purification scheme with a bell pair of F base, which remains constant. So the difference keeps increasing. Hence, the success probability for the purification scheme keeps dropping. Now, these two schemes, the recurrent scheme and the pumping scheme, are two extremes of a spectrum of scheduling poli policies. You can have a greedy policies, where you consume bell pairs as soon as they are available. So what you do is you maintain a list of bell pairs, and this list is ordered according to their fidelities. So you've got pair 1 with fidelity F1, pair 2 with fidelity F2, and so on. And what you do is you take your highest uh, bell pairs of the highest fidelities, let's say it's F1 and F2, and you purify it to get a new pair of fidelity F1 prime. You take pair 3 and pair 4, you purify them, and you get a new pair of fidelity F2 prime. This gives you a new list, and you keep going, so on and so forth. Or what you, you don't need to start with, uh, with bell pairs of the highest fidelities, you can start with bell pairs with lowest fidelities. You can use the bottom-up approach. What you can also do is you can uh, utilize what's known as banded policy. Here you divide your fidelity space into bands and only pairs within the same band get purified. What we mean by that is the following. Here uh, we split the fidelity space, so the line from 0 to 1, into four different bands. And let's say, for concreteness, that the first band contains pair 1 and pair 2, there's one pair in the second band, and you've got pair 4 and pair 5 in the third band, and only a single pair, pair 6, in band 4. So what you do is you take pair number one, pair number two, and you purify them because they are in the same band. And also, uh, you take pair four and pair five because they are in the same band. You leave pair three and pair six untouched because they don't have any partners in the same band. A new set of bell pairs with uh, new sets of fidelities. So uh, pair one and pair two already started in the highest band, so they produce a bell pair of higher fidelity, but it's still within the same band. But let's say that the original pair 4 and pair 5 managed to produce uh, a bell state of fidelity that's now in band number 2. And pair 6 remains same because we haven't touched it. So in the next round you see, okay, I can take pair 3 and pair 4 and purify those. And that's how you keep going. Now the structure of the bands, uh, so how many bands there are and where are their boundaries, uh, has a very big effect overall purification. Uh, the best is that you can choose it depending on the final fidelity. And if you choose it carefully, you can gain a huge boost in performance, as much as 100-fold. So, so far, all the purifications have been ideal. We haven't talked about errors, nothing like that. All of our C not gates, all of our measurements were ideal. They always worked as uh, they are supposed to. In the next step, we're going to see what happens when they don't. See you there.